I want to focus on right now is about two things. Now, when I was a kid, I grew up and I watched my mom as a chronic diet. And every time she would want to lose weight, she would cut her calories, starve herself, she'd start to lose weight, she'd feel better, and then life would push back and she would gain everything and plus some. And after I watched that five different times, I just couldn't understand why was that? She was willing to do the work, she was willing to, to eat healthier, but she was being led in the wrong direction. And what I had to start understanding is that there's broken training that we're doing, there's broken information that's happening right now. And what I want to help you with is I've traveled the world, as I've helped millions of people, whether it's 50 plus countries, I've read a couple books, and I've helped a lot of people. It all comes down to two simple things that I want you to leave with. So when you leave, you're gonna focus on breathing, and you're also gonna focus on these two simple things. Growing up, I watched my mom and my sister Laura eat their food at the dinner table, and then myself, my sister Chris, and my dad would eat our normal food. And that's just how many families are doing this. You don't have to do that. I want you to realize that your food is not about cutting, it's not about restricting, it's about owning where you are. So right now, I want you to envision what you want to get for the next 10 minutes. What do you want to achieve with your body? What's your goal right now? Um, I'm going to run a triathlon. I love that. Run a triathlon. What's your goal? Uh, <laughs> I want to do five sit-ups. Five sit-ups. <laughs> I love that. What's your goal? Um, I'm recovering from some old skin. Okay, perfect. What's your goal, my friend? Um, you want to what? Oh, are these body goals or goals in general? Um, body goals or health goals. Health, health goals. goals. I'm gonna, I want to learn how to meditate more. Okay, I love that. So you have the meditation guru here that's going to teach you that. So I love that. So let's think about the first thing I want to talk about is 1%. So when we set goals, we go all in or not in at all. You know, I was a, I was a collegiate and professional soccer player. My whole life was about being an athlete. And the moment that I stopped playing soccer, I kept eating like an athlete, even though I'm a nutritionist and kinesiologist, but I stopped exercising like an athlete. And I put on 60 pounds in six months. I went on what I call the pizza diet. And it freaked me out because I was either all in or not in at all. And what I had to remember is a lesson I was taught when I was seven years old. So came home from second grade, well, came home from first grade, stopped going to second grade. And my parents said, Mark, they want to hold you back from going into the next grade. Because I couldn't speak when I was a kid. I couldn't form words. So the words would be in my head, and I thought you could understand me, but no one could understand what the word was. And at that time in my life, and I think we all have these moments where we're defined. And for me, not going to second grade, where I had two friends that could understand me, and I had, that was it, and my parents, to stay in first grade and not have any friends, I said, I'll do anything to learn how to speak. So they hired them. My parents brought in the best speech therapist, and I worked six days a week, two hours a day learning how to speak, learning how to form words. And every time I wanted to stop, I remember when my dad taught me. Right when that happened, he said, it's going to be tough days. There's going to be moments where you're not going to win, but you can get there 1% at a time. And he took a big 1%, and he put it in my room. And he said, whenever you feel down, I want you to think about the 1%. Now, it took me four years, but I learned how to form words. And I still have a massive speech problem. Every word that comes out of my mouth, I have to think about that. You'll hear me make mistakes all the time. But I did my own audiobook. I speak all over. So my point is, it's the 1% mindset. Envision what you want. You want to do the triathlon. Think about for the next 365 days or 90 days, what do you need to do 1% at a time to do our five sit-ups? What do we need to do 1% at a time to implement that? Maybe it's going to be that you're going to focus on you know, getting a mid-morning bar in, a protein bar. Maybe it's going to be adding a little more protein to your breakfast. Maybe it's going to be walking five minutes a day. Maybe it's just standing or doing like a, a push-up at your desk or your office. But can everyone do 1%? Yes. Yeah. You think you can do 1%? Okay, so the first thing I want you to leave is the 1%. The second thing I want you to think about is balancing your food. So I want everyone to just move a little bit. Just move a little bit. I want you to breathe. Think about everything you do. Now this is for the next two minutes I want to teach you about how your body works. So your body's energy source, every movement, every breath, every beat your heart makes is created through an energy source in your body called ATP. So everyone just say ATP. ATP. It will make you remember. If I ask you to repeat this, you can remember. So ATP, yes. Adenose, <laughs> adenose triphosphate. 
So just how gas runs the car, ATP fuels your body. And when we think about this, and I love when Petra talked about her baby, the breastfeeding story is the best. I never heard that before. I love that story. Because I want you to envision a baby. A baby feeds every three hours, has breast milk, which is protein, high carbohydrates. They stop eating when they're satisfied. They eat again when they're hungry. So but we were all once babies, and that's how we fed. But what happens is, the older we get, the busier we get, we start skipping meals. We skip breakfast, so we skip that mid-morning meal. And then we go into lunch and our blood sugar's low, we crave carbohydrates and we overeat. We skip that mid-afternoon meal, we start craving candy, then we overeat at dinner. So I want everyone just to do this right now. This is all you need to know about food. Go like this. This is your blood sugar, it's 120 and 80. Every time you skip a meal, your blood sugar crashes. When your blood sugar crashes, your body has to burn muscle to create glucose for the body to make ATP. That next meal, when you overeat, your blood sugar spikes, and that makes you store fat. So the best way is to do something like a baby. It's called PFC every three. It's eating a balance of protein, fats, and carbohydrates every three hours. So imagine this. This is a plate right here. So it's a third protein, a third fat, a third carbohydrate. I brought one for everybody. My company, Venice Nutrition, we're partnering with Sweat and Glow. We're gonna create this Sweat and Glow Nutrition for all the locations so we can start empowering people as they rock yoga, how they can balance their body. Not cut carbs, not starve yourself, not do fasting, but simply balance. So imagine for breakfast, if you like eggs, you could have a couple hard-boiled eggs and you could have some fruit. The hard-boiled eggs would be your protein and fat, the yolks are fat, the fruit would be your carbohydrate. Mid-afternoon, mid-morning, mid -morning, could be a great yogurt, would be protein with some nuts, it could be your fat, and then some layered berries, it could be your carbohydrate. Lunch, instead of craving, you can do a chicken salad. You can do something, if you're a vegan or vegetarian, I love that vegan french fries are vegan approved. I like that, <laughs> you can tell them that there. But the whole point is, however you eat, you just need to know your proteins, your fat, your carbs. And if you can eat five times a day, small mini meals, that balances your blood sugar. You're not using food to lose weight, you're using food to create hormonal balance. And every pound of body fat you have, is 3,500 store calories. So when your blood sugar pounds, your body releases that. That's why this type of program, this type of eating works for someone who wants to do triathlon, someone who may want to lose weight, someone who wants to build muscle. Because there's three things you need to ask yourself before you do any nutrition program. Number one is it based on science. If it's not blood sugar, it's not based on science. Number two, can I do it for the rest of my life? And number three, what if I have a teenager or a child do it? See, I have a 14 year old son and a three-year-old baby girl. I would never have them diet. See, this whole, this is why I'm so honored to be here, because the whole movement around the world is teaching people how to love their food. So everyone say 1%, please. 1%. 1%. 1%. 1%. 1%. Say, balance my food. Balance balance my food. My food. That's the two things I want you to understand. If you can own those things, and you can learn more, I got a plate for everybody. Simple strategies, your palms, simple ways to look at your plate to balance it. And then you can fill your gaps with grab and go meals, protein shakes, protein bars, whatever's gonna fuel your body to optimize. Okay, last thing I wanna end with, because we got a lot of new speakers today. And then we gotta do yoga. I've never done Petra's yoga, so I'm a little concerned. <laughs> and everyone gets a mat and a cool towel, so I know you're excited, aren't you? So you have to stay. I love that. So I just, as we wrap this, I want you to think about the goal that you want. I want you to look at 1% and imagine what you can do every day to compound that. And imagine where you'll be a year from now. And then you start thinking about balancing your view, using food as your foundation, not starving, not restricting. But when that story of 1% in food, um, April is a special month. Um, it's national. I know um, um, Jeff's going to talk about what I did what May's about, but April's about, it's called um, autism awareness. So we have a, our three year old baby girl. Almost four is on a, she's high functioning on autistic spectrum. And for me, and I'm a hugger, if you get to know me, I love people. And probably the first two years of life were the hardest for me and Hunter because our little baby girl just she loved my wife, but she wouldn't, she has sensory processing. So if you look at her, she can't focus, she has meltdowns, and she wouldn't show affection. And what I had to start focusing on is my own teaching about 1%. Over the past two years, we focused on balancing her food better. We focused on the 1%. And slowly and steadily, she got there. And I just did a Facebook Live on autism, on autism awareness. And two weeks ago, a baby girl stood up on our fireplace and she's saying, 
the uh, Never Enough and Greatest Showman as it was on. Mm -hmm. And when I got back from a trip three weeks ago, for the first time, she was at the airport. I walked through the security, Abby Hunter and Hope were there, I went for two weeks. She ran all the way to me, jumped in my arms and gave me the biggest hug. The reason I'm telling you this is because sometimes with our body, we forget about the moment. We forget about what we can be. We get so busy with all of these other things that we don't realize that our health is everything. You can achieve whatever you want, but if you lose that moment, if you don't take my time, your time, and you don't understand that there's many things you can't control in this world, but the one thing you can is how you choose to take yourself, care of yourself. Everything is possible. And what I saw with Hope and what I think she's accomplished just reinforces that concept of 1%. So please, as you rock yoga, as you hear everyone, I want you to remember the 1%, I want you to remember to breathe, and I want you to remember to balance your food. Now I want you to turn to the person next to you and give them a big hug. Come on. <laughs> okay, everyone, thank you so much. Appreciate it.